What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dustin and we're always talking about bow fishing and how to better yourself as a boater. Now we talk about all kinds of things on the channel anywhere from wiring to welding to fabrication to making you a little bit better outdoorsman. So as the fall season approaches and the population on the water begins to deteriorate, you know I fish year round, we're going to try to do a little bit of a boating series to make you a better boater next year, all right? For me, we're gonna start the series out right now with a pre-trip, but this is actually a post-trip, okay? Same kind of thing, right? We went boat fishing last night. Come home at like four o'clock in the morning, parked the trailer. I just unhooked it, okay? First thing I did was uh, I chalked the wheel there, unhooked it, and then I pulled my truck up, all right? My bows and, and things are in there, okay? Kind of a separate video. But my next bow fishing trip begins right now. The whole point of this video is to walk around the trailer, walk around the boat, inspect everything visually, plug my batteries in, make sure that, you know, I got my indicator lights on my charger, things of that nature, to make sure everything is being maintained properly. Because the worst thing that you can have when you go boating or go bow fishing on your next trip is to find out that something's broke, something's not working properly, and all I would have had to do is check it three or four days ago at the house, which is right now. So, Let's do a post-trip inspection of our trailer, of our boat, of everything that's going on inside there. Just give a once-over visual, a quick walk around, It'll take about 10 minutes, and I will physically tell you all the things that I'm looking at and thinking of while I'm walking around my trailer. All right, let's get started. Okay, got everything situated, right? First thing I'm going to think about is, is the trailer going to move? You, you wanted to think about that before you ever unhooked it, right? So we got the wheel chalked. I positioned the trailer in a manner to where the drain plug is sitting low. Okay. Um, I, I, this is kind of a challenge for me because my drain plug is over there on that side. And as you guys can see, this side is actually a little lower than that side. Kind of irks me a little bit. If it rains, I'll have a little bit of water in there. But I attempt to put the drain plug in the lowest position. Okay. Once over around the trailer. This side, I don't see any damage. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, I'm going to look make sure that I don't see any damage to wiring chains, the, the hitch, things of that nature. One big thing to keep an eye on, guys, is this right here. Look at your teeth, okay? Getting a little bit of wear right here, no, no big deal. Look at your strap. Make sure that your strap, you know, especially if somebody else winched the boat up, that they didn't get in a hurry and get this off and out of track, okay? See that little mark right there? That's what happened. And that was me getting in a hurry a couple days ago. I'm going to look and make sure that my boat is up to the roller. If your boat is up to the roller, then the, the frame of the trailer and the boat become one unit. All right. Everything's nice and tight there. There's no bouncing. If your boat's bouncing going down the road, you're doing two things. You're doing damage to the hull and the trailer is not as firm as it could be. I've not used my spare tire in a long time, but just give it a little punch there and make sure that it feels like it's got air in it in case you need to. As I walk around, I'm going to look at trailer hubs, all right? Now, this trailer, I, I kind of despise bearing buddies, but this uh, had them on there, so I put them back on there. Um, I can see that the, uh, the inner portion is out just a little bit, which lets me know that there's grease against the spring. I'm also going to look down inside the wheel and on the, since I have aluminum wheels, okay, you can see, I can get my hand all in there, all right, a um, little bit of dirt and grime, not necessarily grease. If that inner bearing were to go, the first place it's going to sling grease is on the inside of that wheel. 
So just as you walk by, give a visual inspection right in there and see if you see any grease. You don't have to crawl underneath the truck, okay? Um, I, I physically look right here. If I see a, a bulge right here in this area, then that lets me know that the tire is low. You see, that's pretty straight, okay? Makes the unscientific way to know that I've got good tire pressure. As a, oh my, wow. Okay, I just saw something, and this is why we do the video. This is great. So, this is my tie-down strap. Look there. It has worn in two. Now I don't have uh, I don't have lugs back here. This is kind of a, a throw together three or four times uh, fabricated uh, hull, and I've I've never put uh, lugs back here for tie-down straps. The strap has laid across right here and the, the wallering back and forth of road has actually wore that little one inch strap in two. So I've got something to do. This is a perfect example of why we do a post trip. All right. Let's just go ahead and move on. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that. I'll make sure that my plugs are removed and once again that it's pointed downhill um i'll check all my all my connections to my motor back here make sure that i didn't get something pinched or in a bind anything like that all right i'll make sure that my transom saver all right appears to be solid good good shape and that my motor doesn't bounce okay you want to take all the pressure off that transom as much as possible if you've got any connections that go into the transom or into the hull, just kind of give them a once over and look at them. Is there anything rubbing anything going to wall or hole? All right. Now's a good time for me to just go ahead and go over my batteries while I'm here. I'll make sure my selector switch is off. I'll look and see if, uh, you know, if there's any corrosion that's happened overnight or look and see if there's anything wet around here that might indicate that I boiled a battery you know for any odd reason all right let's go ahead got my plug in right here it's a good thing to go ahead and keep everything set up that way all you got to do when you get in is just kind of grab the plug okay hang with me there camera angle all right we'll go ahead and plug this in That takes just a couple minutes to go through its cycles. We'll make sure we got um, flashing amber lights there that lets us know that it's charging. Don't, uh, don't close your lid on the cord. I like to lay the, the head of my cord right there. That way the lid's laying on it. Keeps rainwater out of there, all right? Visual inspection of the prop. Now, one good point that um, I've come across here recently, going down the road, see, we're actually in gear, okay? You guys ever drove down the highway, come up on another boat, and this thing is just going around in circles? The air drag from coming underneath the boat on that guy's boat is just spinning and spinning and spinning? Well... A friend brought up this point. He said, when I park my boat on the trailer, I leave it in drive. Turn the key off and I put it back in gear. Okay, leave it in drive. That will prevent the prop from spinning. You've got all those seals right in there that aren't being lubricated by water, aren't being cooled. So if your prop is just spinning and spinning for hours while you're going down the interstate, could potentially wear those seals out quicker than normal. So, I think that's a really good tip. I, I love the uh, uh, common sense behind that. So, from now on, I'm going to put my outboard in gear when I park it on the trailer. Just a once over the prop, okay? Look for any damage. You know if you had damage or not, all right? Um, look at the skeg. Look at anything that might be missing loose or cause an issue. Um, here's the other side to our actually stayed with the hull all right so we'll take care of that 
lights make sure that if somebody backed your trailer up that uh, they didn't you know back up into anything if there is any way for you to look at bunk boards if you have bunk boards that are exposed check those out okay if you got a generator give it her a shake there make sure that uh, she made the trip everything looks good there could be a good time to check your fuel level make sure that you know what you need to do the next time you go out bow fishing lights okay i know that these back here work loose they don't get loose loose but they get loose enough to where they just kind of move back and forth so that's one thing that i always check when i'm parking my boat all of them okay i just kind of look i kind of grab and kind of okay yeah it's good it's solid it's not going anywhere two or three trips of uh, something not moving eh, you know that you probably don't have to check it and then just a once over of the boat in general one good thing to check is your switches all right all my switches are in the off position i know that my selector switch is in the off position just kind of look at the boat okay minimal trash i don't see a random dead fish laying back there anything like that you know what kind of problems that's going to cause right and then as we come over to our other trailer uh, wheel want to look at it looks like it probably could use a shot of grease or so by looking at the baron buddy there but that's probably pretty accurate because i've not greased them in a while so boys and girls that is a quick walk around of my bow fishing boat as a post trip all right you do a pre-trip inspection go fishing have fun beat the crap out of it and then do a post trip inspection the whole purpose of a post trip inspection is in my post trip inspection i found that my transom tie down okay was broke and i only have one i don't have two i actually have a couple that i could throw on here if i weld a lug on the back of my trailer or back of my hull um but the whole point of the post trip inspection is to find those things that have broken on the road trip on the bow fishing trip um you know whether it be a wear item or a problem item like i've got here that should not have worn all right and i know i need to replace before i'm road worthy to go back out the scary thing about that is that i have polymer on my bunk boards and that is the only insurance that i had that my winch up there did not come disengaged yeah i don't have a safety chain up there since i have a winch and then i always put a transom strap on strap on that was my only insurance so my insurance failed and the only thing keeping the boat on the trailer was my winch so another thing that i personally should probably think about is the safety chain on the front and i obviously need to do either a heavier strap maybe not as tight okay a one inch strap is probably rated for seven eight hundred pounds probably was a bad choice to begin with but we all know how we tend to cut corners until we find the weak link right post trip inspection will find that weak link boys and girls Hey, I uh, appreciate y'all stopping in. We're going to increase the boater turnout on this channel. So if you have something that I need to talk about this winter to talk about boating and trailering and things that you lack, drop in the comment section and we'll try to work it out this fall. I'm White River Rambo. Don't forget to stay safe, shoot straight, shoot off, and wear those personal flotation devices. And I'll see you on the water, boys.